new here, welcome. So today I am going to be preparing a brunch for you and actually this menu is good enough for lunch, for breakfast if that's what you would like, or dinner. And when you think of brunch, usually you think of what? Eggs, you think of pancakes, you think of maybe some sausages. I'm gonna be making all of those things in addition to our salmon croquettes which are really simple and easy to make. So, before we get started, I have my apron here because so many of you have said, why do you always get dressed up? You're in the kitchen and you don't have an apron. So guess what? The hubby got us an apron. Do you like? Nice, huh? <laughs> and we ready. Okay, so what's the first thing we're gonna do? I'm just cutting the potatoes lengthwise and then I cut them in two and make some uniform cubes. Now with oven baked potatoes, let's just say you are running short of time. My suggestion is you parboil them. So you can put them in a little bit of water or um, you can put them in a little bit of water and some chicken stock if you want a lot more flavor. Um, and then parboil them for a little, for about five minutes, and then season them and put them in the oven. Just adding my potatoes to some water. All right, so we have our parboiled potatoes right here. And now I'm gonna add some diced onions, some pepper, and some seasoning, okay? All right, so I got my olive oil. I'm just gonna drizzle that on the potatoes. All right, so now I'm just gonna add my onions and peppers. And again, you can toss it if you want. I'm also going to add a little bit of cayenne pepper, not too much, but if you like a little bit of heat, then go ahead and add some. A little cayenne pepper and definitely a little bit of paprika because paprika will give you great color. Another thing I like adding to everything is turmeric and if you've been looking in the description box, you know I always leave a link to turmeric and where I purchased it from in Amazon. This is organic, it's super healthy for you, full of antioxidants, um, good for your digestive system. Turmeric is one of the main ingredients in curry powder but turmeric itself is uh, completely natural. You can buy turmeric in the supermarket whole if you want to go through the process of grinding it and drying it. So there you go. I just love the color it gives to potatoes. It's like a perfect mix. So now I'm just gonna lightly toss it and then put it in the oven. It's been such a cloudy, gloomy day here and I was about to go out and get some thyme and mint, and it is pouring with rain. Okay, so I thought I would get some peppers since I have some here. These, are, these look like Thai chili peppers, so I think this would be nice in our salmon cakes. I think that's actually more than enough. I also have this pepper here. This one's really big. I think this one might be done. Let's get some mint and thyme. So as you know, fish is always good with thyme. <laughs> the, the rain has beaten this thyme down, but I only need a few. See, I only need a few sprigs of it. Let's get a little bit more. But wow, that's a big sprig. Okay, so we got our pepper, some thyme, how about some mint? Mint is always good for garnish. And mint will grow crazy in your garden if you don't be careful. So. Of course, make sure you wash everything off. Okay, so the next dish we're gonna make is our salmon croquettes. You're gonna need a can of salmon, 
okay? Now, obviously, I would recommend that fresh salmon is always best, but in the South, they typically make salmon croquettes with tinned salmon. And obviously, during quarantine or during this pandemic, some of us have canned goods because it's a little bit accessible and it's easy, right? So if you don't have fresh salmon, no problem. We're going to use this canned salmon. And to open this canned salmon, we have this handy dandy little gadget. What is this you say? So this is the handheld electric can opener by Kitchen Mama. I was sent this product to give my honest opinion and review. I held on to it for a couple of weeks just to make sure that I got to use it with a lot of different cans and it really does work. As long as the can is a circle, uh, it will work. You need four AA batteries and you can pretty much use this can opener anywhere. Um, I think it is really user friendly. It feels nice in the hand and it's safe and easy to use. I think it would be a great product or great gift for anyone who has difficulty opening cans like the elderly or someone who has arthritis. I think this would be a great gift for them because it's so simple to use. Right? And then you press it. Yay! All right, so besides the flour and the seasoning and the salmon, you're also going to need about half of an onion, which is what I'm dicing here. Okay, that's about half of an onion. You're also going to need one egg, and you're going to need some pepper if you want a little bit of color and more flavor. And of course, what did I tell you? You need some thyme. Thyme is good with fish, so I'm gonna add some thyme to this. Oh, and I got my chili peppers. Remember the chili peppers we got from the garden? I'm going to add that also, and some scallions. So all of this is going into our salmon croquettes. So when it's done, you simply lift it off and your can is open. So now I'm gonna drain off the water. And now we're going to open it up so I can take out the bones. Because to make the croquettes, uh, you might not want the bones in there, so you just pull that to the side. So we got our salmon in a bowl. I'm going to add, first I'm gonna add about half a cup of this cornstarch flour mixture. So I have my panko breadcrumbs, which I'm gonna put on this plate here. And you don't have to use this, I just like the extra crunch. Okay, I'm gonna form a crab. I keep saying crab, it's actually salmon. I guess I must want crab, but this is a salmon croquette. So I'm forming it in my hands. And these are fairly generous sizes. That's nice. Then I'm going to put it on the panko. It's gonna pick some of that panko up, both sides. Now we're ready for the pan. Hot oil. Very little oil. You're literally going to use about a tablespoon of oil, not more than that. You're just trying to brown it and make sure it's cooked in through the center. And it's easier to use your hands when you're putting it in so that it doesn't fall apart. And so to make sure that it gets cooked inside, because you know there was an egg in there, uh, I'm gonna cover it for a few minutes. came out looking really nice. Can you see that? Now we're gonna flip this one. Nice. Let's 
So for pancakes, I'm starting off with some batter. You can make homemade batter with eggs, milk, flour, buttermilk, or you can simply buy some store-bought pancake mix. But I can't think of brunch without thinking of pancakes or waffles. How tall can you make your stack <laughs> before it falls? So here's the table before. All right, so we're starting off with a clean pan. You wanna make sure you didn't have that fishy grease in the pan or any crumbs. And then I'm gonna add my butter. But if you don't want the butter to burn too quickly, you can add a little bit of olive oil to that. That way I really retain the taste of the butter, uh, but it won't burn too quickly. And make sure that my eggs don't stick. And the thing with eggs is you have to be patient. You don't wanna you know, mess with it too much. You want it cooked, but you don't want them hard. So once I mix it a little bit, and you don't want to mix it too fast, once you mix it a little bit, I'm just gonna let it sit, let it be. So I'm gonna put some spinach on half of it, and I'm also gonna put some scallions, some of our cheese, and this is cheddar cheese, and you can put any other cheese you want as well and then fold it over so this is a pretty big omelet i'm gonna try to be careful there you go almost so it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be delicious and to make sure it cooks in properly i'm gonna cover it just for about two minutes this is a pretty large omelet, so I'm going to cut it in half. That way it's easier to take it out. But you don't have to do that. Okay. Beautiful. And to complete the eggs, I'm going to fan out some avocado. And avocado is pretty delicate, but it's good. So there you go. that little piece of avocado. So you want to make sure you clean off the edges of the plate. You don't want the plate messy, not too messy. We're going to sprinkle a little bit of powdered sugar on it. That just makes it look that much more decadent. And we're done. The last thing we're going to make is some virgin mimosas. You can take some club soda for the fizz and then add some orange juice. And there is your mimosa. Again, this is a virgin mimosa.
mimosas are ready. I, table is not complete without a pitcher of water. I have this cute pitcher from Home Goods. It's not big. It can serve about three to four people. And I just think it will complete the table because it's important even if you're ser serving coffee or tea to have an alternative. And then I also have some fresh watermelon um, because you cannot have brunch without having fruit. So we're gonna have some strawberries and blueberries on the table, but I'm also presenting some watermelon. And that's just a fresh sprig of mint from the garden. It just makes it look so pretty, so fresh. I have these madelines, which are delicious and beautiful, but how are we gonna elevate this for brunch? Well, I will show you what I'm gonna do. This is paper, one of those paper dollies that you can find in many discount stores. So that's how you turn a store-bought dessert into something semi-homemade and special looking. Isn't that pretty? Here's the thing, when you're hosting a party or a brunch or tea time and you've got a lot of people, and I don't have a lot of people, <laughs> but for demonstration purposes, I want to show you that sometimes it's okay not to make everything. add my cherry and isn't that cute isn't that adorable it just makes it so much prettier so I thought I had a pretty big table and this table will sit up to six seven people but I'm almost out of room with the food so let's see we'll put that there all right let's take out a oven roasted potatoes they are definitely done you can see they have those nice crunchy edges. And I like to use containers that are oven to table safe. Don't forget your serving spoons. And if I didn't in the past, I will put a link to Amazon where you can find a lot of these like dessert and serving spoons to use. These are great and you can get them in like a pack of four or five Don't forget your lemon wedges. I hope you enjoyed watching me make all these delicious treats and you can make them yourself too in the comfort of your home. You don't need to spend a lot of money out on the streets exposing yourself when you can make it right at your home. So make somebody feel special, make yourself feel special, make your family feel special, and make them something nice. So if you have not subscribed yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. We bring you family, lots of food, lots of garden and home. So if you like lifestyle type videos, and again, with lots of food, then make sure you subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and I will be back shortly with something else delicious. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to hit that notification bell, because some of you are not getting my videos, and I want to make sure that you are, okay?